Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Justice Burns. I'm chair of the Association of Justice and Treatment Professionals, and I am a judge in Ontario. Uh, today we're going to talk about communities of practice and uh, welcome to today's um, uh, event. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you a sense of what we are going to discuss um, today. Uh, and uh, um, I'm going to be joined by um, Brandy Lee Galia, and she's going to um, uh, conduct the technological component of our webinar for today. I'll introduce Brandy Lee later on. But let me give you a sense of the agenda. We're going to I've already begun the introduction about we, we and then we'll do a land of land acknowledgement. And then I'll talk about what a community of practice is. And we'll discuss the community of practice leadership group. Um, and we'll talk about various types of AJTP communities of practice. And then uh, some rules and etiquette um, just to ensure that the discussions go smoothly. Talk about how to um join a community of practice and then uh, brenda lee will do uh, what will be actually the more interesting component of this presentation she will do a, a little demonstration of the technology that we are going to use in this community of practice and then we'll have our q a and uh, and then we'll wrap it up um, in terms of q a which i'll like to say is uh, um, uh, send ask your questions using the Q&A. We'll monitor Q&A and, and at the end of our presentation, we will um, uh, answer your questions and we'd love to engage with you in that regard. We will begin by acknowledging that we are meeting on the Aboriginal land that has been inhibited by Indigenous peoples from the beginning. As settlers, we are grateful for the opportunity to meet here and we thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. Long before today, as we gather here, there have been Aboriginal people who have been the stewards of this land. In particular, we acknowledge the Ashinaabik, the Huron Wendat, Odinoshoni, the Obijue, Chippewa peoples the land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this land. We also recognize the contributions of the Métis, Inuit, and other indigenous peoples. We recognize that they have made contributions we have, which have both strengthened and shaped the community, in particular our province and country as a whole. As settlers, this recognition of the contributions and historic importance of our indigenous peoples must also, also be clearly and overtly connected to our collective commitment to make the promise and challenge of truth and reconciliation real in our communities and in particular to bring justice for the lives lost in residential schools, as well as all the murdered and missing indigenous women and girls are across our country. And I've, I've, I've given this land acknowledgement, certainly because I am, I am speaking to you from the city of Brampton in Ontario. You know, I, th th I, I would like to, um, um, just this talk to you about the reason why communities of practice are important, at least from the perspective of the Association of Justice and Treatment Pro um, Professionals. You know, I, I have a recollection of an event involving um, somebody called John, and, and John had this tendency uh, of always going and buying a lottery ticket every Friday. And so one day he goes to his typical convenience store, he buys his lottery ticket, and as he comes out, Winthrop just comes at him and violently pushes him to the to the ground um, uh, and then just takes off. John suffers some injuries. 
And um, um, and of course, 911 is called, the police arrive. Um, John is, by, by, with the help of CCTV um, uh, cameras and so on and so forth, John is tracked down to a nearby home and there is a fierce physical battle with police officers who seek to apprehend him. He, John uh, 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 Winthrop, Winthrop hurts uh, uh, in the struggle uh, of his arrest. He hurts the uh, police officers um, and he's, he's apprehended. He's apprehended and his actions have terrorized his community and he is um, taken into custody. Now, at this moment in time, just think about what the people who were around, what do you think about Winthrop in terms of what he did? What John thinks about him? John got hurt. Think about what the police think about him. This guy gave them a hard time. He caused trouble. He was being arrested. Um, and and, and th as I've said, just think about what the prosecutors are going to do in terms of, of, of the nature of the offense. That is one side of Winthrop. Right? But there's another side of Winthrop. That is the side that emerges after he's come down a little bit and he's in custody and he's visited by the, by the prison nurse. And there in talking to him, the nurse finds out that Winthrop is a person who at the, five years ago, he was driving a vehicle with his wife and four children. They got into an accident and they all died. He survived and he's lived with the guilt of being the driver. He's lived with the guilt of surviving. And the drugs help numb the pain. He has suffered trauma. And the nurse and all the people who see that side of winter have no idea of the damage he caused and the injury he caused. They have one view of winter, the human view the traumatic view, a person who has suffered. The police officers, and the crown prosecutors, and John who suffered the pain and the, and the people around who saw Winthrop's actions don't know anything about that part of his humanity. But they saw a part of, of Winthrop which was true, a violent man. So you have those two components of the same person. And unless those two components talk, have conversation, share the biographical information they have of Winthrop, which is true, you are not going to have a clear picture of Winthrop. And that is talk about, that's why I'm talking about the justice and treatment side, talking to be more effective in terms of holistic rehabilitation. Another reason why we found this that conversation is important is I give the example of Justin and Alicia. Alicia was a top well-known therapist in the addictions field. And she had a specific modality that I'll just call the, the D plan that she used for many years and she was an expert. And it was very successful, was successful. Then there was Justin, who was also a, a, a specialist in a different part of the country. And he used another methodology known as the Z methodology. And he was also successful. And John and uh, uh, Justin and Alicia were talking at some conference and they listened to each other. And each of them were talking about each other's type of modalities which they did not share. You see, Alicia figured John has lost their mind because of the methodologies he used. And uh, 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 I mean, Justin. And Justin figured Alicia has lost uh, her mind because of the modalities they used. They strongly believed that their methods were better because their methods were working. And it's unless, unless Justin and Alicia start to talk and really learn from each other, they may not realize that not one shoe fits all. One form of a plan may work for one, but may not work for the other. And so Justin and, uh, and Alicia go on and retire, and one day they return to deal with, to meet their colleagues, and they recognize that due to new research, it had become clear that some of the modalities that they were both using were, was in fact, as much as it was helping people, it was actually causing more harm. Research and knowledge had advanced. You see, new things become old and we learn. And we only get better by learning. 
And that is why the Association of Justice and Treatment Providers focuses on learning. And you realize from all I've talked about, you realize that holistic rehabilitation involves the justice, treatment, and community components. And that is why when you look at the, the, the symbols of the Association of Justice and Treatment Providers, it may not be very clear, but you see almost like four, three hands almost like working together, right? You look at the, you know, you see another symbol of, 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 of the connection of multidisciplinary approaches, justice, human, justice, treatment, community. And by community, we also include the individual working together. And that is the reason why learning is an extremely important component of what we do. And we do it through webinars. We do it through conferences. And now we are also trying to include something called communities of practice. And what communities of practice allows us to do is that it allows us to have more in-depth conversation with people who are in our practice area or our topic area it allows us, for example, to have conversations, for example, with, with, with for people who work, for example, in the substance abuse area. It allows them to have conversations with other substance abuse therapists to talk about various approaches. You can use it, using chats email, virtual meetings, uh, allows us to, to, to share ideas and learn from each other um, um, in terms of how we can optimize our, our results and improve the things that we're doing. Allows us to help each other more, providing technical assistance to determine uh, areas where we can um, uh, uh, improve in terms of what kind of areas can we uh, improve in terms of our professional development. And so the Association of Justice and Treatment Providers has 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 um, uh, developed a number of 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 uh, community practice uh, areas. We right now there are about fourteen. You can see the full list at www justicetreatment.org. There are communities of practice that focus on mental health, um, some that focus on substance abuse and addictions, some that focuses on the determinants of crime, individual and community well-being. There are communities of practice that focus on different types of therapeutic and justice treatment courts, whether it be drug treatment courts, mental health courts, um, uh, domestic violence courts, wellness courts, or whatever or other types of justice and treatment uh, partnerships, uh, whether it be community justice centers, for example, to ensure that these things function effectively, each community of practice has a leadership group. And these leadership groups are made up of, you know, a chair, vice chair, secretary, and four members at large. Um, uh, that help to ensure that these communities of practice continue to be effective. Now, there are also some rules that govern um, uh, how these communities of practice are going to function, and and and, and certainly as, as you expect, right? Um, uh, uh, we want to ensure that we create a very uh, safe uh, environment. Now, now what I'm going to do now very quickly is launch uh, um, a, a couple of polls and and have you just give me uh, um, some quick. Responses. So, so I'm, I'm going to launch the first one. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I have no idea how this is going to work out. Uh, you are my very first uh, um, uh, use of a of a poll. Um, so, so, so let me see if it um, uh, if it works. Okay. It looks like uh, not Brandon Lee. Are you seeing any polls? So you're not. If you are not, then are you? Okay. Well, then those of you who are functioning, who are here, just uh, uh, tick respond accordingly and let's see how it all goes. Um, okay, so got, got uh, uh, okay, I got a, couple, a number of responses. 41% uh, of you say that it's a forum for multidisciplinary um, uh, partners to discuss various ways of optimizing uh, results. And 59% of you said it's all of all, all, all of above and you are 100% 
absolutely uh, um, correct. I want to thank you um, um, all because you have just participated in um, the first poll ever launched by an almost 60 year old man. You can tell uh, the fact that uh, I am I am uh, not technologically savvy, so I am extremely proud of myself. So 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 you so you, so you can expect that when it comes to these types of the rules, you know, like no personal attacks. You know, you try and and, and restrict the practice areas and assume that whatever you say will be is something that others will, will look at. And 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 uh, for the full uh, um, monty of of the rules and stuff, you can see it at the www.justicetreatment.org uh, uh, website. And if you want to join a community of practice, that is the same place to go. Um, you you know, go on a website to tell you how you can join. You you you. Some of you would have received some invitations that have been sent out by Brandy already. We'll send invitations to you if we know who you are. But you can certainly send you can send a request to join. And in fact, when you get when when, when you get um, um, these invitations, you can also send them to others. Or so let you can let other people. You accept your invitation, but you can you can let other people know that these committees of practice, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, exist, and invite them to join. We are better. Um, uh, the more, the merrier, uh, as they say in the business. And 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 so I'm going to um, I'm going to do my last poll, um, and and um, and then and then you tell me uh, if you can actually see this uh, poll. Um, uh, I, I, I'll say I'll say I feel great. I I, I hope I hope uh, um, I do hope that you do feel great because all I've done here is that I'm I am the warm up act. What I've done is that I've done come here and I've just sort of warmed you up for Brandy Lee, right? So um, uh, so let me tell you something, you know um, about about uh, uh, um, Brandy Lee, and and and, it, and it's very interesting because. Oh yeah, I just found it. I was trying to stall because I had lost my notes. So, so, so here we go. I mean, Brandy Lee is a fourth year student at the Ontario Tech University, and, and that is in uh, the regional municipality of Durham. Um, and she actually is eagerly approaching the end of her undergraduate degree in uh, legal studies. Um, for those of you who've been through it, you know that's a very exciting time. We are coming to the end. Um, and Brandy Lee enthusiastically anticipates the next chapter of her life which is fulfilling her dream of attending law school. Uh, beyond academics, she finds joy in graphic design and exploring new technologies through hands, uh, through research and hands-on experimentation. So with that, I am going to end, uh, stop sharing my screen. I see the button here, I can press this, I'm all done. Um, so Brandy Lee, it's over to you. Thank you very, very much. Again, thank you for the wonderful introduction. Um, I'm flattered to be here, honored. And uh, my role today is to uh, sit and um, speak with you guys about new innovation um, that you guys can use for the communities of practice. Um, Justice Barnes uh, gave me such a wonderful introduction, so I don't need to uh, elaborate on who I am. But my goal today is to enhance your understanding of Microsoft Teams functionality through its live through a live demonstration. I hope you enjoy it. Microsoft Teams is a collaboration platform developed by Microsoft designed to facilitate communication and teamwork within organizations. It provides a wide range of features, including instant messaging, file sharing, video conferencing, and integration with other Microsoft Office 365 applications, such as Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. MS Teams allows users to create virtual workspace called Teams, where they can collaborate on projects, share files, hold meetings, and communicate in real time. We are using the free version of Teams, however, there are costs if you upgrade. Uh, please visit the Microsoft website uh, for more information, and I'm not being sponsored just for the record. Most of you have already should have already received an MS Teams invite to your unique community of practice or practices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to play a video for you. I'm just going to share my screen here for you. And what I'm going to do is it's a little video on how to join Teams. So earlier today, you probably got an invite. And this is just a video if you're unfamiliar of how to become a guest in MS Teams. So I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully everybody can see that. It's a brief video, maybe 
a minute or two. Uh, enjoy, and then we'll come back and I will start with my live demo. Receive a Microsoft Teams invitation to join a team. There are a couple steps to accept the invitation. Let's see how it works. Open the email invitation and select Open Microsoft Teams. If you don't see the invitation, check your junk or spam folder. If your email address has not previously been used to create a Microsoft account, you'll need to create one. Select Next, create a password, and select Next. You'll need to verify your email address. Open the verification email and copy the security code. Enter your security code, select Next. Enter the CAPTCHA, select Next, then accept. If you don't want to download the Microsoft Teams app, select Use the Web App instead. You've now joined the team. From here, you can view or reply to posts or create your own posts. And select files to view or edit team documents. If you already use the Teams app in your organization, joining a team as a guest is a lot simpler. Just open Teams and choose Yes to switch to the team you are invited to. Now you can collaborate on the project in Teams. To switch back to your company's team, select it from the dropdown. Thank you. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my live demo. I'm going to actually start with your um, the communities of practice that you possibly might be in. So I'm just going to share my screen and I will show you the interface in which you will probably be working within uh, the next uh, moving forward. So. As it stands here, uh, actually what we do, I, I don't know how many people are familiar with the actual uh, having a meeting, but this is the meeting interface uh, you can see yourself on here. Um, and just briefly, um, this is where you would go into the chat and speak amongst the, the people in the meeting. Um, this will show the people in the meeting. You can raise your hand if you have a question. If And, and this is for if you conduct a meeting on your own. Um, this is the interface you're seeing right now is the interface that you would see if you were hosting the meeting. So because Justice Barnes is hosting the meeting and I'm um, hosting it with him, I have um, functionality for the host at your end. You won't see exactly all of this, but I'm giving you the view. So if you ever decide to have a meeting in teams, then you can go ahead and this is what you will be seeing. Uh, this is a note. This is these are two polls that Justice Barnes uh, was nice enough to give us today. Here's your camera. Here's your mic. This is to turn them on and off and sharing. So that's just the simple over here to the left is how many minutes that we've been in the meeting and how many people are in the meeting. And now I'm going to move towards uh, showing uh, uh, you. Bradley, we are still seeing your um, your video. Oh, oh, OK, I see. All okay. right, let me change okay. that. OK, thank you. I'll get rid of the video. I'll get rid of this, and I can get rid of this, and here we are. Just let me know if you can see that then. There, can you I, see? Can you see that? Not yet. The right now, I just see you. OK, that's fine. I'll bring uh, I must have lost the share. That's OK. I will start to share right now again. And there we are. OK, do you see that? Yes, I do. OK, perfect. So this is the interface that you guys will be seeing as far as your communities of practice. All right here down the side are all of the communities of practice. Some individuals in groups may see themselves in, in multiple communities of practice, depending on your role in each one of those um, communities of practice. I'm sorry for that, for not being able to see. So let me just uh, show you the interface. So what I'm gonna do actually, so just give me one second here. 
I'm going to stop sharing. And what's happened here is that it's only sharing a small portion of my screen, which I'd like it to get to share all of the screen. So just bear with me here. Share and. There we go. So you guys should be able to see this here and you should also be able to see the actual meeting that we're in. So this is the first thing I'd like to discuss. Sorry that you couldn't see it earlier. So Justice Barnes, can you see the meeting that we're in here? Uh, yes, I can. Perfect, okay. Okay. So this here, just briefly, the time is to the left. We have a chat function here. So if you were to host a meeting, you would have these, this functionality. The question and answers are here. This is where all the people are down the side and you can modify to the way that you would like it. These are all different. And as I seen earlier, people were using some of these uh, reactions, which is nice. And all the camera and the microphone are here. So if you'd like to turn them on or off, that's entirely up to you. And if you're looking for more options, you can just go down here and you'll get more information for your settings and things like that. So that's for if you are doing a webinar or you're doing a, a, a meeting. Now, this is the interface that you're going to be using from day to day. And this interface is so that you can instantly talk to people, you can host meetings. And what would happen is I'm going to show you, I have a um, uh, MS Teams um, forum as well, and I can easily switch back and forth. So right now I'm in the justicetreatment.com forum with you guys but I can also switch to my forum as well. And I'm going back and forth uh, between the two in this presentation, just to show you how easy it is to get back and forth between the different um, organizations that you're a part of. So I'm going to turn my camera off so you won't be seeing me and I'm gonna continue to do the demo. So just bear with me 30 seconds and we will continue with the demo once I get my screen. Up. Okay. So just bear with me. Yeah. I think we can't hear you. Your microphone is off. OK, so there we go. So this is the communities of practice, as you can see at the top here. This is where our activity is, and this is all of our teams. So each of you will be populated one of these teams. And the amazing thing about MS Teams is that you can go into your community of practice. So let's just say the adult mental health. And what you can do is you can go in and you can see the other members in your team. So it shows here. There's 40 other people. These people are the people that you're gonna be collaborating with on a weekly, daily, monthly basis, and you have direct access to them whenever you need. So if you're in a situation where you need to speak with somebody urgently, or you need to speak with one of the other professionals, you can go in and, inst and instantly message them. You can see who's online. And in each one of these communities of practice, it gives you the opportunity to speak with somebody in record time. So no more emailing if you don't need to. You can just jump in and speak with anybody that you need to speak with in the community of practice. Now, if you wanted to be a member of a community of practice that you weren't in, you can just email Justice Barnes. And he can go ahead and put you into the specific community of practice that you'd like to be in. Um, so the chat function, so we're going to go down the left hand side. These are all called apps. And essentially what they do is they will give you the functionality that you're looking for. So first is the activity portion. So you will see here all of the activity and it's up to date and it usually is at the top of the list is what's most recent and then it goes from there. And you can sort through the different activities. You can also set your notification settings. So if you don't, if you're in, you know, you want alerts, but you don't want them to be heard, you can go in there and select those notification settings to make it so that when there is activity in this window, it doesn't um, disturb anybody in the office. Uh, so the next app is the chat app. And as you can see, 
everything that's in the chat, everything that we did in the meeting today is going to be available to everybody um, once the meeting concludes. And you'll find that in the chat. The meeting will show in the recent just as it is here. And the good thing about this is that you can send a new message to somebody if you'd like. So just by ent entering their name here. So if I was going to uh, want to message Justice Barnes, I would go ahead and type a message saying hello. And he would go ahead and get that message at the other end. He can react to that message if he wants to. He can also, um, in that chat, he can have files. So right now we haven't shared any files, but if we were to share files, you would see them under this tab here. And you could go back into these files after your conversation is done, after the meeting is done, they'll be here after, which is great because if you're like, oh, um, he sent me a file, what did I do with it? You can also upload those files to your computer. Um, and so that works very, very well as well. You can also chat with team members in your team using this function. You would just put their name into the search or you could just go here and type in their name and write them a message and instant message and they get that instantly. The other thing um, that's such, I guess, the key component of MS Teams is actually the Teams. And as it stands right now, they just came up with an update. That's why you're seeing those pop ups. Um, but in this um, uh, view, you will see all your teams. As an administrator, I have all of them here, but you may only see one or two, and you can toggle between them. So if you know somebody in this community of practice, or you're a part of, you can go in here and you can make posts. So let's just go to the adult community court. All the posts for this uh, portion of the communities of practice will be here. This is your main post. So if you're talking to the group as a whole, you will go in and you will make posts, send messages. I'll give you uh, an idea of what that looks like. I'm just gonna switch over to my other, other uh, so I'm a board of director in my community and I make posts all the time to my community. And what what um, what happens here is that the general post is what we use most often. And you can go in here and you can make announcements to the group. So if we were having an annual general meeting, you could make that announcement here. People can comment and reply. People can um, you know if they ask questions if they want to. Um, the other thing too is that anytime that I put a file, see I'm sharing the walking club printable calendar. That everything you share within the general um, window, you can find in the files. So as you can see here, I have sent and received many, many files within my uh, community of practice or my condominium corporation uh, board of director role. And the files are all in one place, easy to find. Um, you can also um, post things. So for instance, if you want to show people what's going on and you want to highlight something like, for instance, our, our budget, our profit and loss statement, what happens is, is you can make them a tab so they're easy to find up here. Um, these will be things that you'll be using as we go on. Right now, I'm showing you this because this is currently populated, so it gives you a visual as to what it's going to look like in the future for your own community of practice. But uh, this is exactly what I'm speaking about as far as functionality. All your files are in the same place. You have instant communication, instant collaboration. Um, I actually did a poll as well. And just like um, Justice Barnes, he did a poll in the meeting. This is a poll that you can send out within your community of practice group. So if somebody has a great idea after a meeting and you guys think that, oh, this would be great and see what the rest of the group thinks, you can actually create a poll and you can just have that there. You can send the link to everybody. And then here's your responses for the poll. So I was able to find out how many people wanted to walk. Who would be interested in participating in a community walking club? 13 people said that they would. And then I also talked about who would you bring with you? And they told me family, friends, children. And then I talked about, and you can actually ask like questions about what is the likelihood you'd like to become an interim leader of the walking club? Um, so uh, people voted for that. And then I asked, I couldn't figure out what days that I wanted to start. So I asked people, what days do you prefer to participate? And they were able to give me so I had the vote out and it's still open. Anybody can respond. I didn't put a deadline on it, but that gives you real time feedback. And I think with what Justice Barnes was saying, there's so many things that are new and innovative and changes and things are happening and growing and evolving. And I think these things will help with um, 
bringing you down a path of innovation uh, for not only the community of practice, but the people you're trying to help. Again, um, I wanted to send something out to my community, and this was about safeguarding elections against proxy abuse and misuse. And I, I thought that it was important, so I posted, I, I tagged it up here. Now you can add another one. So if I wanted to add an, a file or something that I thought was important in my community of practice, I would just push this here and you can add a file. You can add whatever it is you like. It actually gives you an option as to what you wanna do. You can add a file, an Excel, you can add a form. The form is, is the polls. Uh, you can add a PDF. Now, if you don't want to add it or you don't want to highlight it, you can just download it to here and this is what, where, where all the files will be. So moving on to the calendar. The calendar is where you would start a meeting. You can actually start an impromptu meeting now or you can uh, plan a meeting down the road. And if you choose to use that option, it will show up in your calendar. You can actually invite people during the time that you're creating the new meeting or you can invite people after by giving them a link. This is the user interface here as far as what it would look like if you were going to join a meeting or create a meeting on your own. And you would fill out the corresponding information. And when you save it at the bottom, you would end up with a link that you would copy and paste into the email that you're sending out to people. And that would make it so that everybody would then have the ability to join the meeting once the meeting was prepared. Now, you don't have to be in the calendar to have a meeting. You can actually be in a conversation with somebody. Let's just say this person here. And let's just say that I want to have a meeting with them. I can actually do an audio call or a video call right from the chat window, which is very, very convenient. And so, for instance, if you're having a meeting, you're like, wait, let's just have a meeting today. Right now, it's important. You can do that as well. But if you don't want to be on camera and you don't want to have a video call, you can also do an audio call as well, which is very, very handy. That brings me to calls. Sorry about that. Um, that brings me to calls. Now, some of the functionality, as I expressed to you earlier, um, might be limited because this is a free version of MS Teams. Everybody is allowed a free version of MS Teams, so I encourage you to download it on your app or on your phone. If you have one, you can do it with Google Play. You can do it with the iPhone. Um, if you don't want to download the app to your PC or you don't want to download the app to your telephone, you can just use the web version, which I, in, the, in the video um, that we watched at the beginning of this um, uh, live demonstration, you've seen where she had made a reference to, if you don't ha want to download the app, all you have to do is just use the web version. And if you use the web version, you will still have the functionality that you have as if you were and had the app or downloaded the app. So that's the good thing about Teams. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A. And then um, I'm gonna wrap up. I wanna say again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, there's other things that, if there's any other things that you wanna know about MS Teams, you can just jump onto YouTube. There's lots of videos there. It can be overwhelming, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of the communities of practice, the direction that the organization is headed in. And I thought it was an amazing opportunity for you guys to be able to use the most innovative, uh, up-to-date, collaborative, instant um, technology that we have today. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Brandy Lee. Um, uh, I see, I don't, I do not know if anybody has got any specific questions. Uh, I don't see any questions in the Q&A. Um, or what I can say before we wrap up is that uh, this is something that uh, uh, we are trying to start. Um, it's got some exciting possibilities um, in terms of getting a, 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 create an environment whereby we can continue to um, learn from each other. What I can tell you, for example, is that um, uh, 30 years ago, um, we began something called the Drug Treatment Court, and um, uh, as, a, as a, a young uh, lawyer at the time, I had certain specific ideas about addiction and treatment, um, and I was very confident that I knew a lot about addiction and treatment. I mean, that is that is the, the badge of honor of law school. Um, when you go to law school, when you come out of it, you have to believe that you know everything. Um, well, that actually is useful 
most of the time, but when you do not know anything, you can be a real danger. So um, um, we started the drug treatment court in a way, and we did certain things as legal types that we believe was correct. Um, we found out about two years later that in fact, what we, what we were doing was doing more harm than good. And I learned there that I had a lot to learn because I didn't learn about addiction in law school. Right. Um, so so it became important that it was important to have this ability to collaborate and and, and learn and and and, um, and then um, uh, uh, it also became clear that uh, treatment providers, as much as I did, I had no clue what addictions and treatments was about. Treatment providers had no clue or any idea of the, the stresses I had to deal with as a crown prosecutor in doing my job. And, and, and I came to realize that by us talking together, things got better. If you are interested in participating in communities of practice, please feel free to join. If you are interested in being um, uh, part of the leadership um, group that uh, breaks this in and, and, and gets this thing off the ground, please uh, do not hesitate um, uh, to participate. I don't see any questions. I'm going to wrap up. It's, it's afternoon. It's lunchtime. I want to thank Brandley um, uh, for helping us uh, sort set this thing up and, and for um, uh, providing um, a, a, a great introduction to this process. Um, this is another phase in our effort to create an, a platform to allow us to communicate and to learn from each other, and we are hoping that you embrace it. So with that, we'll wrap up with great thanks, and I hope you have a fabulous um, afternoon. And for those of you who have long weekends, I hope you enjoy it, and we shall be connecting with you and um, uh, a community of practice or, or at some future AJTP event. All right. Thank you. We'll wrap up. Bye. Thank you.